Hi, welcome to the first Immigration.ca live stream series of 2019. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and SkilledWorker.com. Today we're going to be discussing the two express entry draws of 2019. There's also a new program that's opened, as well as some developments with regards to Quebec. So Colin, what are, what are some of the new developments of 2019? So, you know, we, as you started off saying, 2019 started off with a blaze in terms of the Federal Express Entry draws. The two draws happened in January. Why don't you summarize them? Okay, so there were two draws in January, as Colin said. And for both draws, 3,900 candidates were invited. So the first one was on January 10th, and the CRS score was 449. The second draw was on January 24th, and the CRS score was 443. So what can viewers expect for CRS scores this year, Colin? So if we take a look at 2018, I mean, that's, that's the first starting point. 2017 would be a bit uh, too far uh, to, to go back to for many reasons. Uh, but if we look at 2018, there were nearly 90,000 what we call high-skilled invitations issued. And the intake target uh, was 74,900, say 75,000. If we kind of look at those ratios, 2019, the government had, uh, an, uh, they have an intake target of 81,400. Again, it's the high-skilled uh, candidates for invitations. So if we kind of rely on a similar relationship in the, all of the ratios, let's looking at this year, we can expect to see close to but just under 100,000 invitations uh, over about 25 draws. Now, the big question is, where will CRS scores go? Um, and to answer that question, it seems likely that it will continue to range in between the 440 and 449, which is quite similar to what happened last year. And the reason for this is that, you first of all, you have many more students coming to Canada. And as we know, uh, going into a study program, graduating from a Canadian study program, gives you, if it's a one-year program or a two-year program, gives you an allotment of points <coughs> towards your CRS score. Uh, then you've got work permit holders. So if you, you look at the work permit holders, if you're coming to work in Canada, that also gives you quite a, a number of points. Uh, and so you've got these two gra large pools of people, study permit holders, there's about 600,000 coming to Canada in 2019, work permit holders, very similar numbers. So well over a million people in Canada on temporary status, all in a position to earn additional points towards the express entry system CRS scores. So if you put together the increased number of invitations that we anticipate, probably in the range of 10,000 new invitations, combined with the two large pools of people who will be able to add significant pointage to their CRS scores, we're probably going to see the overall scores really not moving that much. Continue to be in the range of 440 to 449. I can't really imagine that it's going to gyrate much more beyond those two flagpoles. Okay, so based on what you said then, to increase one's CRS score, basically they need to find a job. Is that correct? Well, it is, the, it is what we've always, we've always defined this as the gold standard because if you do have a hiring sponsor employer, you're, 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 really, you're, you're going to, first of all, be entitled to a work permit uh, under any program, very quick entry to Canada. If you're a, uh, an IT professional, for example, you can be in Canada in really 30 days under the global talent stream. So by going for a work permit, looking for that hiring sponsor employer, uh, you are really pursuing the, the ideal objective, which is become qualified for a work permit and then position yourself, receive points under express entry, perhaps qualify under a provincial program, but it's really your, your almost automatic, can't ever guarantee, but it's your almost automatic ticket to a permanent program in Canada. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Colin. So moving on to the next topic. So there is a new program, the Rural and Northern <coughs> Immigration Pilot. So what are some highlights about this program? So this announcement that came last week comes on the heels of a very, what we call successful, but that's really relative in terms of the numbers of people. But the, the, the Atlantic Pilot was and is considered a successful project in terms of 
helping rural areas of the Atlantic provinces, the smaller provinces on the East Coast, uh, participate in a recruitment and retention program using this particular pilot. Now, the numbers are only about 2,500 a year for those uh, provinces. And we anticipated that uh, the government would come out with a similar program uh, that will allow the provinces with northern reaches and rural communities such as Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario and Saskatchewan, as well as the three territories, they will be able to also draw on a similar program as the Atlantic Pilot. Now, what this program is not, it's not a program that one can actually apply into. It's not a program that a candidate from overseas can say, I want to qualify for that program. What they really are doing is looking to communities that will be participating in this program. So uh, this is a, a program that uh, different um, rural communities will position themselves to be uh, uh, what we call a designated community. Um, it, it's a, a, a many criteria and still to be announced. But ultimately, you're going to want to target employers that have approvals in those, reg you know, in those communities. So you're looking to, again, find an employer, become sponsored, and that program will give you uh, very quick work permits and will allow you to uh, position yourself for permanent residence. So really, uh, again, it's going to be a recruitment and retention tool for a number of employers uh, that are going to be uh, approved within these rural and northern communities. So we're going to keep an eye on how this program and the, the fine details that are uh, going to be revealed as we come closer to launch date, which is expected in the June 2019 period. Okay, so thanks, Colin. And moving on to a question that a lot of people have. So what can we expect from Quebec immigration this year? Well, you know, as we near the end of the first month uh, of this new year, uh, we're, we're sitting with, uh, with much anticipation uh, with a very uh, highly touted Quebec uh, program that launched in September of 2018. Uh, it very well replicates the Federal Express Entry System. Uh, we, uh, the, it's known as ARIMA. And uh, applicants were submitting profiles and continue to submit profiles to this new expression of interest system. The problem is two big developments have taken place. First development is that the uh, Quebec government changed in 2018 October. The new government is what we call a populist government and they came in on a platform of restricting immigration. Now it's not uh, massive restrictions, it's it's what we would call light restrictions in terms of the, the annual numbers that Quebec brings in was 50,000 individuals per year. That includes 30,000 skilled workers. So what Quebec government is doing, and they came in on this platform, and they have to deliver to some degree, painfully so, because Quebec's economy is booming. It's one of the highest performing economies in the country. A lot of labor market shortages. So it becomes very difficult for a government to really stand behind its policy of saying, we're going to restrict immigration. That's how they came in, uh, and they got elected on that basis. And at the same time, they have to serve Canadian employers. So this restriction is very light in terms of 10,000 uh, candidate. Uh, the numbers are being reduced for 2019 to 30,000 economic class instead of 40,000. Uh, but what's happening also is we have this backlog of immigration applicants under the old system. So that backlog is really staggering. It's 18,000 individual applications, but that translates into more than 50,000 individuals. So looking at the math, you've got well over one year of skilled worker individuals, assuming all of them were qualified, and that yet uh, is, is to be determined. So you have a, an inventory of about a year uh, of candidates that the Quebec government currently, some of these applications date back to uh, some say 10 years. So we're not seeing from our case load a 10 year backlog of any of our cases, but there are cases, and, and why is this so? What Quebec authorities were doing, and we can say this without authorization, they were applying an expression of interest system in a very, uh, secret way in the sense that they were taking applications that they wanted to process from territories that they felt 
would align well with Quebec policy objectives. So you had individuals submitting applications from certain parts of the world or with certain profiles that they didn't feel met or aligned with Quebec policies. And they didn't have authority to really just um, ignore these applications. But yet, they were doing this. There are certain court challenges that are pending. Uh, I'm not sure that they address that point uh, clearly. Um, but in the reality is that these backlog of cases have to be processed alongside this new ARIMA immigration expression of interest system. So what's going to happen and what applicants uh, can really expect, there will be no movement, unlikely any movement, on the new system until at least September, not before the earliest September 2019, uh, which the Quebec government currently is, is, is promising to, to uh, get through in terms of getting an answer on how they're going to attack this backlog, most likely what we expect, as has been done before in other parts of Quebec programs, they'll take a certain number from the backlog and they'll take a certain number of the new cases so that there will be this blend of fresh cases combined with the older cases that they uh, would rather not process but they're going to be forced to process and it'll be sort of uh, one or two of the new and one of the old or two of the old and one of the new. So eventually, as we did see this on the federal side, a kind of two parallel system where old cases plus new cases will get to the forefront, but it's going to take time. So if you are destined to go back, if you have submitted an expression of interest application, do not expect to have any development until at least September 2019. And moreover, you should be looking really uh, at other programs. You need to be um, seeking uh, programs that are more aligned with your background. If you are French speaking, for example, don't waste your time with Quebec. That is the message we are candidly giving to anyone. People who come to us who have background in both English and French, we readily put them into other programs, not Quebec. Uh, because there's just no interest for and no appetite to have to wait for this kind of delay. And secondly, if you're an individual who doesn't have the criteria uh, for um, other programs, again, you're looking to the gold standard, which is find a hiring sponsor employer. Well, thank you very much, Colin, for all the updates. Uh, if you are interested in coming to Canada, please go to our website, www.immigration.ca, and complete our free online evaluation form. We'll then get back to you with your options. And as always, please follow us on our social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and we'll keep you posted for the next live stream as well. And we also have a discussion forum on our website, so we love discussing with you there as well. So you can always go there to you know, discuss further. So thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next live stream. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.